how do we actually translate European fashion trends into our own unique style? In today's show, James has a ghastly time with a ghostly character in Ballarat. And look what we have here, James. This is a good place to be hanging around. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Nina samples some of the luxury of our newest five-star hotel and finds the neighbours are a bit unusual. But first, we'll catch up with David Johnston doing what he loves to do on weekends. One of my favourite activities is wandering around Melbourne's art galleries, looking and exploring and discovering all sorts of new art. Now, a company called Creators has put a new angle on this popular Melbourne activity. Hi, I'm James Sherry. Today, I'm <laughs> I can't do this, I'm sorry. Well, Emu Bottom. That's the name of the place, Emu Bottom. Today, we're at Emu Bottom. Hopefully, it's got nothing to do with the emu's anatomy. So Rosemary, why a Japanese resort here? Well Nina, after coming back from Japan uh, and living in Japan for a number of years... In the heart of busy Melbourne on Flinders Street, a tribute to those brave souls from the four corners of the earth who came to Australia to make it what it is today. A tribute to them and a chance for us to reflect on our immigration past. Dredges operated as normal today, however overburdened works and the Morwell open cut was shut down when the number 10 dredger was partially buried by this morning's landslide. Firefighters say the blaze appeared to have started in the front room of the house caused by a spark from an open fireplace and resulting in extensive damage to the weatherboard home. One unit from Bendigo and two from Eagle Hawk attended the scene. When the men failed to return to their cars by nightfall, a friend alerted police. Police were about to begin a huge search when a Vic TV news crew spotted them just before 11am, about four kilometres north of the Kaua Weir. The Skywatch helicopter transported the men to the Weir where they were met by police. The offence had occurred while his client and Stuart were under the influence of alcohol and the drug Rohypnol. Mr Capel told the court his client had a scattered memory of the night and couldn't shed any light on where the missing hand might be. Telecom linesmen were trying to install a power pole in Alamein Street when an auger struck the underground pipe. The fire broke out shortly after 8.30 this morning when telecom crews drilled a hole through a gas main. David's co-driver for the 500 kilometre event was veteran John Goss. Parsons is new to Group A racing. His performance in his first three events has been enough to make some of the top drivers sit up and take notice. If he keeps his nose clean, and I see no reason why he won't, and he circulates all day, the guy will absolutely finish up in the uh, top ten, maybe top six. Detectives are investigating a suspicious early morning fire at a solicitor's office in Bendigo. And on what was a busy night in the regional centre, firefighters were called to a second major blaze. Peter Nugent with more. Firefighters didn't have far to travel to reach a blaze at the Bendigo 10 pin bowling centre. It's next door to the CFA station. But as well as difficulty gaining entry, the officers were hampered by concerns the roof could collapse. The fire, believed to have been caused by a faulty hot water system, resulted in damage estimated at $200,000. And the arson squad is investigating the cause of a fire half an hour earlier in Bendigo, which destroyed a solicitor's office. CFA crews contained the blaze to the lawyer's premises. It caused $100,000 damage. Police found the massive marijuana plantation in dense forest near Morwell in southeast Victoria. This morning's drug bust is by far the biggest haul in recent weeks. Its street value is over one and a half million dollars. 
Local police used four-wheel drive to reach the crop. It was planted in a narrow clearing stretching over 60 metres. Many of the giant plants towered over police as they cleared away the last of the crop. No arrests were made as a result of today's raids. Police are continuing investigations. Dean Allen Craig, 10 News. Teams of police swooped again around the Latrobe Valley today. This was one of another series of more than 30 closely coordinated raids in Morwell and Churchill. Yesterday more than 30 arrests were made. Today police took another 12 into custody. And like yesterday, police recovered firearms, illegal narcotics and stolen property. Trafficking in heroin and other drugs will be among the hundreds of charges to be heard in the Morwell Court. You're going to have the arteries of an old man, Dave. You're going to die of a heart attack. I am an old man, at least I'm going to die happy. Sure. BKC Port Melbourne 203. Port Melbourne 203. Yours at 1430 is to attend code 30 at Ross and Bridge Streets involving a male who is either drunk or high. Receive 19221. Let's go. Hey you! Get off the street! Hey, look, I almost hit you! Hey, come on, look, are you drunk or something? It's alright, sir, we'll take care of this. Yeah, well, well it's about time. Uh, come on, uh, that's alright, come on, let's go.